Welcome everyone. This is Radek Dąbrowski, Toastmasters blog, interview with Toastmaster next episode. Today we are starting the episode and you are starting new year. That's why I've got a really exceptional guest who is our district director of D108 in Toastmasters. This is also expert in engineering, really wonderful woman, great speaker and leader, Gabriela Royweinen. Hello, Gabriela. Hello, and thank you for such a nice presentation introduction. Thank you. It's, it's really my pleasure. By the way, Happy New Year, Gabriela. Happy New Year. Let's hope the next year will be better than all the rest. Oh, yes. Mm. This is the wish of every one of us. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling well. I'm uh, working today. I missed some vacation. I had very short vacation and uh, I'm looking forward for the weekend. <laughs> All right. Okay. So today we are going to have a kind of interview. If you don't mind, I'm going to, to recall the shape, how it's going to look like. Do you mind? Yeah, no problem. Yes, you can record. All right. So the first round is going to be related generally to Toastmasters. What was your way? how did you learn about it and so on and so forth uh, round two is pretty short there are 10 questions quick questions and quick answer from your side it can be funny it can be serious we will see mm. and the last one the round number uh, three is related to your hobbies your profession anything you would like to share with our viewers and listeners are you okay with that yes let's go that's really nice. Thank you for that. So let's start. Gabriela, you are from Romania, but uh, right now you are living in Finland. What do you do on a daily basis in Finland? My daily base uh, schedule is uh, divided between uh, work. We have to work a, long, uh, a lot of hours. So. Um, about eight every day. And uh, then uh, I uh, try to spend time with my family and uh, allocate time for my hobbies. And whenever I can, it, I am traveling. So fortunately in Finland, uh, I have a, a little bigger vacation than I used to have in Romania. And uh, I can travel and I like to do it whenever I'm free. That's nice. And uh, let's go back to Romania right now. Uh, how long have you been uh, living in Finland? When did you move to, to, to Finland? I moved in 2003, so um, almost 17 years this year. And um, it's a decision. So uh, I feel uh, like Finland is my home whenever I, I am in Finland. And I also I can say that Romania is my home whenever I'm in Romania. So I usually feel at home wherever my family is, and I have a lot of homes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, generally in Romania, um, because your Toastmaster, it's it's too less describing you. Okay, but let's start uh, uh, from from this question: uh, Have you attended Toastmasters meeting in uh, Romania, or everything started in Finland? Everything started in Finland, so. Um, I joined Toastmaster many years after I moved to Finland. I never heard about this uh, program while I was uh, living in Romania. And uh, in my hometown, I don't believe we have any club there even now. So um, it was a totally Finnish experience, that Toastmaster program. Okay, and can you tell us uh, how, how it all started? Did you need any special skill or it was a kind of accident? How, how it started? It was a kind of accident. So um, I received an email in my uh, uh, work um, email during my work time. I received an email from a colleague working with me that uh, there is this club where you can practice English and uh, communication and leadership skills. And I received this email several weeks. And then I met uh, a friend at the gym and she said, hey, why don't you join this Toastmaster program? And I said, okay, let's give it a try and let's see what is this about. So I was not looking for it, but uh, it was a pleasant surprise and I was addicted after the first meeting and uh, here I am. Here I am after 
I think uh, about eight years now, almost eight years in Toastmasters. Okay, really good number. And what about Finnish language? Have you ever attended uh, Finnish clubs, you know, uh, when they are speaking in their mother language or this is English speaking club only? My club is English speaking club and uh, I would say that uh, in the entire Finland we have uh, two Finnish speaking clubs and uh, the rest of them are in English and I think one, uh, with one exception, one is in uh, Spanish. So majority it's English and uh, also the majority of the members are foreigners willing to speak uh, more than uh, the normal level in Finland where people don't have this need to speak so much. They speak what they want to communicate straight to the object and they don't make all kinds of stories around it. So all right. only English. Mm. Okay, so if we are talking about your club, Mm, Toastmaster Club. Can you please recall its name and when, when do you need for our viewers and listeners? My home club is Virtual Speakers. It is, um, we celebrate it, we are going to celebrate this week 200 meetings and uh, the club was chartered in uh, 2011. It's a corporate open club, so we have uh, people from the, from my company, but also people uh, from any kind of uh, work areas. And also lately we opened the club online and we have all kinds of guests from abroad. And I'm really happy that uh, you agreed to be one of our club coach and uh, you are participating heavily in our meetings. Thank you very much. Yes, it's really, really nice to participate over that. And actually due to my professional duties, I'm not going to attend a uh, 200th uh, meeting However, I will be really willing to see some uh, photos maybe from, from this uh, celebration and so on, really regret it. Anyway, this is Brilliant Club and uh, we are learning over there and having great fun every two weeks during our meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Gabriela, you, you said that, uh, that actually uh, you are in the club for about uh, eight years right now. Mm -hmm. um, you achieved really many uh, skills and also positions in Toastmasters. Currently, you are the most important person. You are the biggest leader in our district, district director. And my question, which uh, probably is going to be helpful for our viewers, is what was your path to this position? Can you please uh, describe it? So uh, I started um, as a regular member and uh, then uh, I wanted to do a little bit more. I wanted to help the club because uh, uh, I was gaining so much uh, pleasure and knowledge and uh, fun during the meeting. So I wanted to help and I was uh, vice president of education initially and then uh, club president, then uh, area director, division director, and then I uh, applied for the core team and I was a club growth director, program quality director, and today I'm district director. This term, this uh, term that started in uh, July and uh, will end uh, next, uh, uh, this year in June. Okay, yeah. Really great uh, career path, I must say. So actually, if you are so familiar with so many roles, you actually know what to expect and uh, what kind of challenges that the people can face. So you can be really uh, helpful as a mentor or coach or just a kind of support for any of them. And actually, if I uh, ask you a question, what kind of skills uh, everyone could uh, achieve on their officer's, Toastmaster officer way? What would you say? I would say that um, there is a very large uh, variety of skills. For me, what was the most important was uh, learning how to listen. We think that we are listening, but uh, most of the time uh, we are in our head preparing for the next question or to answer or doing other plans. We are not active listening and uh, learning how to listen and to show that you are listening it's a skill that I was learning during those master meetings. Another skill that was very important and helpful for me was that um, you need to convince people around you to join your projects, your dreams, what 
whatever you want to do. You cannot do big projects by yourself. And uh, I'm on a specialist track in my profession. So I used to be the one that is doing all the work and knows all the answers. And at some point, if you want to do more, you need people around you. And in Toastmaster, I learned how to convince them to believe in me and uh, to believe that my proposal is right and also how to make myself listening to them and trust them and work together. Working together is not something that uh, you can do by default with anyone, but in Toastmaster you practice and you become better and better. Yes, exactly. I, I must say that actually on my uh, own experience, I can say that it's really, um, I must say, challenging but also really uh, pleasant thing uh, to have this collaboration with people because we don't have any tools to force anyone you know um, we are volunteer organization and actually we need to inspire we need to attract we need to persuade and uh, this is also these are also the skills we are learning in here to be better and better every, every day mm. yes Okay, so Gabriela, I think that uh, this is uh, pretty enough about Toastmaster for the moment. And we are close to close round number one. However, it's not over yet because uh, round two is ahead of us. And it's going to have, as I said, 10 quick questions. And I would be grateful for your 10 answers. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so about four elements, air, water, earth, or fire. Which one I choose? Yes. I, cho I choose water. Oh, okay. Your favorite <laughs> expression? Thank you. <laughs> the best book you could recommend to read to us? Homo sapiens by, um, I think it's Hurari, the author. Okay, thank you. Uh, title of your best speech. Do you remember? The list. The list. Okay, I need to find it somewhere. <laughs> Tiger or elephant? Tiger. Favorite way of spending time? With the loved ones. ACG or ALS? ALS. Sport, to watch or to practice? To practice. What are you afraid of? Failure. And the last question, describe yourself in one sentence. What you see is what you get. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Gabriela. Congratulations. You were really quick, I must say. And actually, this is uh, the round two is finished right now. Are you ready to go to round number three when you, I would like you to present uh, what, you, what you like uh, and um, what do you do? Okay? And what's okay. your plans for the nearest future? Okay, I know that you like traveling, especially to exotic places. What country made the biggest impression on you? I have several countries in mind, but uh, I would say that um, one of the best was uh, Japan. I uh, was really amazed uh, when I was uh, visiting Tokyo and the uh, towns around it. It was such a strange combination of uh, tradition and uh, ultra sophisticated technology and uh, the culture is totally different. You, you, I was feeling like in a movie. It was really a great experience. Okay, thank you. And except of that, I know also that uh, you like spending your time uh, playing with your dog. <laughs> What's its name and uh, <laughs> what are your favorite games? So uh, I have a, a Finnish dog from Lapland from northern uh, part of Finland, the one that is used to um, be around the reindeers. 
and uh, her name is Leah. She's uh, 12 years old. And uh, we go to any kind of uh, exercises together. Uh, she is practicing swimming and um, some uh, agility courses and all kind of um, dog things. And the, the best, uh, the most interesting or pleasant uh, uh, practice with her is dog which is kind of uh, exercise. We have a big uh, ball and it's an uh, uh, exer physical exercise for owners and dogs together. So we do all kinds of movements and uh, all kinds of uh, so doga, know, balancing. Uh, so, so Gabi, uh, doga is uh, somehow like uh, yoga maybe, yes? Yoga in, with in dogs, birth? yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes, okay, is, nice. is, this, is this something which is a kind of a tradition, especially for Scandinavian people, or this is, uh, let's say, worldwide popular? I think it's not just in Scandinavia, but uh, I must say that in Finland, the, the offer for dog training, it's huge. I've never seen such an offer when uh, in other countries. So uh, you get up to 20 courses from where you can choose what you would like to do with your dog from um, mushroom uh, picking and uh, finding till the uh, running in, in a on a truck and uh, many many offers going with the uh, um, skiing with the dog and all kind of things you can do with the dog so i understand that leah is uh, is a really sporty dog she's a sporty dog <laughs> yes <laughs> swimming dog and so on okay congratulations yes, yes. okay and also there is one more thing i'm really interested uh, to ask you about and uh, this is about uh, ceramic work can mm -hmm. you please develop it my my entire life i was uh, more more uh, focused on doing uh, you know work with my mind so at uh, my professional place i'm uh, I don't do a lot of physical work most of the time. I'm in front of a computer doing stuff there. And uh, I wanted to do something different. And I have found this ceramic work. I was thinking that it's nice to try something new. I'm not very good at it. But um, you need to have patience, which uh, is good to practice at any level. And uh, it's good to take your mind from your daily work and worries and uh, plans and the uh, schedules and do something with your hands and uh, you might think that it does not require any thinking or at least i was thinking that uh, i just go there and to be uh, just in my head and do something but it's not the same and um, it's quite rewarding that you can actually do different kind of marks and uh, vases and uh, whatever things that you can do and i was very very fortunate to have a very good teacher and uh, really professional colleagues so this is a, a kind of a club in my hometown sponsored by the town and uh, with very little money you can do a lot of things and my house now is full with this ceramic work that i, I don't know where to put it anymore so i took a break now and i'm planning to start again this year. Okay, Gabby, a friend of mine told me some time ago, because he was a salesman on this time, he told me that uh, he was going to come back to this kind of classes you've just mentioned, uh, because he was really stressed about his, you know, um, work in sales. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you can really be uh, kind of reset on that, fully relax and just focus on what you are doing and all uh, bad uh, thoughts and all failures that are present in your in your mind, they are going off. Is that true? Yes, it's kind of mindfulness that uh, you live in the moment and uh, stay there and trying to to uh, do whatever you do in a good way. There was even a movie uh, with the ghost, and the yeah. the Demi Moore was doing this pottery, and uh, I like the movie. It's very old, and I will. I was doing this pottery and uh, all kind of things like she was doing. So you, you just focus on what you're doing and uh, be careful with your uh, hands. You don't need to have any algorithms in your head or to think of any equations. It's, a, it's 
put from time to time to do something totally different. And this was totally different. Thank Gabi. So, so far, ceramic ware uh, were was always associated in my mind with Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze about this, this movie. Exactly. But right now it's going to be, <laughs> to be also associated with your person because you, mm. you also recommend it as a really mm. good, good way and all kind of hobby. Okay, let's go to your, to your profession because as far as I know, you are the leader of, of a team doing some projects in engineering. I hope I, I did not mislead anything, but uh, can you please tell us something about it? My company is um, um, dedicated, to, dedicated to people flow. So we are uh, manufacturing um, elevator escalators. We are called Kone. And uh, I'm pretty sure that if you go in an airport or in a hotel, wherever you are in this world, you might find Kone elevators or escalators. And uh, in my work, I'm a vibroacoustic engineer and I'm uh, focused on um, um, ensuring that the, the users have a very comfortable and quiet ride while they uh, go in uh, high-rise buildings. And um, I'm uh, focusing on um, computation of this in-car noise and vibrations and measurements and uh, doing uh, my best to ensure that the quality is the right one. I'm pretty convinced that, that you're achieving your goals uh, in there as well. Okay, and uh, there is one more question because we started from Toastmasters, everyone knows why. And, uh, and I also would like to ask you about what your plans are for 2020 in Toastmasters and except of Toastmasters. In 2020, I uh, am going to, in June, at the end of June, I'm going to finalize my uh, term as a district director. And I uh, hope that uh, we all in District 108 will achieve our goal to be president distinguished. And uh, to achieve this goal, we have um, a lot of work to do, each one of us. And uh, it's good to, it's always good to test your limits and go outside your comfort zone and try to do a little bit more than, uh, than uh, you have done before. After that, uh, I'll be immediate past the district director and then I'll support the core team to reach their goals in the term that will start in July. Outside uh, Toastmaster, I must uh, say that um, I plan to dedicate a little bit more time to my family because uh, Toastmaster is a hobby. However, while uh, enrolling in these uh, positions one after another, I had to spend a lot of time, which was really pleasant time, but uh, I had to spend a lot of time uh, uh, with this hobby time that I took from my family. And now I want to go back for a while to my family and uh, spend time with them. And um, let's see then next year what will happen and uh, which will be my priorities and how I will prioritize what I want to do because I always want to do a lot of things and I need to choose. You cannot do everything. You need to focus on a couple of the most important things that you want to do. Okay, thank you, Gabby. Yeah, I fully realize that actually this is really great and, and, and pleasant adventure about Toastmaster. However, on this level you are right now, you to be, to be the leader of, of all district officers, it's also challenging and demanding and also time consuming. So I, I realize that I'm pretty sure about it. And actually we are um, ahead of uh, the last question. The last question is, um, it's just the last thing, the last idea, anything you would like to share with, with our audience, anything you wish. I hope for everybody that uh, 2020, the new decade that started uh, three days ago will be a great one for all of you. And uh, we will all try to be a little bit kinder, nicer to others because I believe that um, everything starts from inside. So if we do something good, if we try to help somebody to do a nice gesture, to be supported, to listen more, to be there for our friends and families and clubs and work and colleagues, then I think that uh, we will be happier and the world will be happier. 
Thank you very much on behalf of, uh, of me and uh, all the audience. And generally, dear audience, uh, today my guest was Gabriela Royvine and our dear and great uh, district director. Today we had an opportunity to meet her online and learn about her, not only about her Toastmaster successes and achievements, but about her private and professional achievements and so on. I am really happy that uh, I started the series of interviews with Gabriela. That was my target and she agreed in uh, about December last year uh, to begin the, the year like that. So Gabi, thank you very much for your time, for all your answers, for all tips uh, sharing uh, the knowledge and, and sharing with us your, your hobbies and private interests. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for asking. And, and during, using the opportunity, uh, we've just started the new year. Once again, I would like to wish you all the best for your private and, and professional goals and about Toastmasters. Wish you good luck and thank you very much once again. See you during uh, our next meeting in virtual speakers. Thank you. See you. Thank you.